What should a step parent do differently from a biological parent? What are the differences? I post once a week, so subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell and I'll let you know every time I post. So what are the differences of being, between being a step parent and being a biological parent? What do you need to actually do differently? Now there are lots of differences between a step family and other family types, but I won't go into all, a lot of detail in all the differences. I'm concentrating on, in this session, on just what you, the step parent, needs to be able to do differently. The things that would help that are different than if you were the biological parent. I would put at the top of this list to be positive, not negative. So as a step parent, be encouraging, be complimentary, be, uh, point out uh, the good things and the achievements. Veer away from being critical or passing comments about things that aren't right or pointing out discipline issues that are problems. I would keep all that negative stuff away. Instead, cultivate and develop a way of positive parenting. This often means not saying something at the time you see something is wrong or you spot something that could be better, but waiting for that time to pass, thinking about it, planning it, and then deciding how you're going to tell the child in a positive way that they could do better, or it could be done differently, or it would be better if things were another, they did things differently and, and, and it was done another way. This often means um, talking to the child about things in advance rather than in retrospect. So instead of saying to a child, you've left the hall in a mess again when you came in from school, say to the child before the morning, the next morning they're going to school and say, now I've been thinking about this. It's difficult when you come in from school to put everything in the right place. So let's go there now and sort out where you can put everything when you come in from school. That way you can be positive. You talk about it in, in advance. You can praise when they do it. You can enjoy them. You can give them a hug and say, well done, you've done it, fantastic. Instead of saying, oh, look at the mess you've made. That is probably a big thing that needs to be done differently. And in that you'll notice, I have said, not only talk to the child in a positive way, but use planning in a different way. So when things are wrong, as a step parent, you need to plan more Plan how you're going to introduce the child to something that needs to be done differently or suggest something the way they're going to do it, something differently. And then, uh, so it's about introducing rules in advance so that they can keep the rules and then noticing when things are done well and praising. So that's four things that are differences from the way that you can do it as a parent. Now you'll say to me, oh, I do that, you know, of course, you should be doing that with your biological child as well. Well, yes, but it doesn't matter if you don't. The child will accept you as their parent. And even if you don't always work through praise, it's not a problem. But as a stepchild, you really resent somebody other than your parent telling you off. You really do. It can break down the relationship. It can distance them. They feel remote. They feel 
as though they don't want to be there or associating with you if you criticise. That relationship with a stepchild can be broken as a step parent, but as a, a biological child, the child is stuck with you as their parent and they're much more forgiving, as are you of them. Which leads me to another thing to be mindful of, which is, as a step parent, there's no earthly reason why you should love your stepchildren. And it's very easy to start to dislike them, especially when they're around your house the whole time. So dealing with the positive can help you build a better relationship as well. But also to give yourself some slack because it's not easy to take in another child and love them or welcome them into your home. And it's perfectly okay not to love your child. In fact, the child will know you don't love them. It's much better just to depend on a respectful relationship and then trust and then ultimately love can grow. But not loving your stepchild is not a crime and you shouldn't give yourself a hard time for it. Instead, reward yourself for being the good person that you are with the stepchild. The fact that you're even listening to this video means that you have the greatest of intentions. So just make sure that you reward yourself enough in order to be able to do what you need to do for that child. And so nurturing yourself is a very important part of being a step parent. Now you'll say that to, to me again. You'll say, oh, but you need to as a biological parent. It's exhausting as a parent. Every parent needs to uh, do self-care and sh demonstrate self-love and nurture themselves. Yes, I will agree with you, but never more as a step parent. As a step parent, you really need to look after yourself so you can remain buoyant and okay about the situation and be able to keep on giving to that child. Otherwise, tempers flare, it's easy to come up against them, it's easy not to like them or not like what they're doing. Nurture yourself so you can feel good in yourself enough to be able to carry on showing generosity and compliments to them. It is probably at this point also worth just mentioning a difference between a step family and a biological family in that often, often, in a step family, almost by definition, there has been change, change, quite dramatic change in that child's life. And when there is change, there is loss. Now, some change is welcomed. Sometimes children will say, I'm really glad mummy and daddy split up. They weren't getting on. But even if they say that, they've still suffered loss. Loss of some of the things that were before. So often you're dealing with a form of grief in a stepchild that simply doesn't exist in the same way in a biological child. It does sometimes, because they, they too can experience loss, but it's, it's, it's not the same. Often when you are coming into a step family, you are dealing with children who've experienced quite big changes in their lives already, fundamental changes, most of them that they didn't want and that have been done to them. And then they're expected to welcome you, the step parent, into their lives. And that's just one more change. Often they feel, when they have to welcome you, the step parent, into their lives, they feel as though they've lost their other parent, your partner, because your partner has started to build a relationship with you, which can sometimes feel as though 
the child has had to slip down in importance and is less important than they used to be. So it is a tricky relationship and one that you do need to look after. And it is worth knowing and thinking about the way the changes that have happened to the child have affected them. I mean, sometimes we're talking about regression. The child is more childlike than their age. Sometimes we're talking about a sort of, um, they become a bit anxious. Sometimes they, 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 they need to be sure everything's okay, so they become a bit you know, controlling so that they, uh, they know what's what and they, they can only sort of do things if they're comfortable with things. It's those kinds of sort of signs which will tell you that the child themselves are trying to cope with change. And then there is the very obvious point that you are the step parent and not the parent, obviously. You do come into your partner's life as their new partner. And so your stepchild will first and foremost see you as their parent's new partner. It is just worth thinking, what is it you want to be to this child? What role do you want to have? Some step parents don't want a parenting role. They just want to be the child's parent's partner. They do not want anything more. Or you may want to take on a full parenting role. And some stepchildren do call their step parents mummy or daddy. So the scope is very broad and it is worth helping yourself and everybody in the family out by identifying what sort of role do you want. Sometimes they want as a step parent to be a bonus parent or a sort of aunt and uncle type figure or an older sister or an older brother type figure. But it is worth just working out what it is you're wanting and then discussing it with the child after all. There's nothing worse for a child than some other adult to come into their lives, a partner of their parent, and start insisting on, on having a full parental role. The child can really resent that. But if you talk to the child about the role that they would like you to, to be and have, then perhaps you can come to some great agreement and it can work extremely well. Likewise with your partner too. Your partner can make assumptions about what you're going to be for their children and the type of parent role that you may take in the family. But if those assumptions are left undiscussed, they can either assume that you're going to love their children just like they do when you don't, or the alternative, which is when their children come to stay, they have full, step, uh, full parenting responsibility and you are the outsider and should make yourself scarce while their children are around because that's the way they want it. And don't, don't, and you don't get um, included in any of the decisions and then you feel left out and the outsider and second best and all these other things that a step parent so often feels. So talking about what role you want and what role others want you to have and to come up to some kind of at least spoken about uh, conversation so it's out in the open but also a negotiated uh, agreement on what what role you do have can also help enormously. One final thing it's very tempting for a step parent to go too fast. It's very easy when you enter, enter a step family to see all the faults and to see how the improvements can be made. Often it's about things like health, what they're eating, 
taking exercise, what people should be doing, how they should be spending their time. My final thing would be, as a step parent, just to go slowly. Go at the pace at which change, more change can happen at the right speed for them. As a step parent, you're nearly always wanting change faster and that's difficult for them. It's almost like go slow to begin with and then you will get change faster. But if you try and push change too soon, too early, then often that can be met with huge resistance. So those are the things that I would say are the kind of key things to think about as a step parent. We run workshops, sessions, we have an email response service and I write booklets and see the description box below for links to our social media and website.